Here we go with another instant pot meal. This is really simple. Um, it started with a Facebook post. A friend of mine asked if anybody had a recipe for white chicken chili. And I was looking for something different to make. I did some Google searches, looked at two or three recipes, and then I was like, I kind of had a basic idea of what was in it. And then I just decided to wing it after that because I never really follow recipes anyways. And to be honest with you, that's how most of my cooking uh, YouTube videos get made. Um, the day, the first time that I made it, I made it with whatever I had on hand. Then I made it one other time and kind of modified that a little bit. And this is the new modification that I think is a hit. It's, it's different than all the other recipes, but it's still a very, very good dish. So, um, anyways, I went ahead and pre-cut up some onions. That's one whole entire onion. You can use less or more, or not at all if you'd like. <laughs> um, you're also going to need Southwest corn. Basically, that is a whole kernel corn that's got... Poblano and red peppers in it already. Now you could use just a can of corn or fresh corn out of the freezer and add some peppers to it. You know, you just kind of want it to be a little bit spicy. A can of black beans, a can of chickpeas, a can of diced tomatoes, a can of white beans, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, one package of ranch seasoning, I'm using boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You're also going to need some chili powder and some ground cumin. So, first secret about cooking in the Instant Pot, even if it don't call for it, put just a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of it. Always keeps things from sticking. Second trick I'm going to tell you about the Instant Pot, anytime you're cooking chicken, Put something else in there first. Corn. This is corn with the juice. Goes in the bottom. What that's going to do is that's going to keep the chicken from laying right on the bottom. And that's going to stop any burn notification. Works great. Second thing I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and put this onion in just so I can get it out of my way. Just going to dump it in here. Hopefully most of it makes it. Alright, now I need my hands. <laughs> I did wash my hands before I made this. Before I started this video, my hands are clean. I don't know why I have to say it every video. I'm sure you know if you cook, generally your hands are clean. Next, go ahead and put the chicken in. As far as the chicken, the amount... You can really use any kind of chicken breast. I just, lately I've been buying uh, boneless, skinless, skinless thighs simply because they are more tender, to be honest with you, when they're cooked. What I do is I put them in there kind of neat until they cover the whole entire bottom. I don't want really any gaps in there. I just kind of lay them in there. So, that's probably somewhere around, I know I measured this the last time because I'm like strict on my diet. It's around 20 ounces of chickens what I used the last time. Um, I'll show you when I get all this in there what it looks like. So, it's not going to be this whole package, which is like a family size package. It's going to be slightly less. It's going to be all but three, it looks like. I might be able to fit one. No, I think I'm just going to stick it right like it is. So there we go. There's the chicken. You can kind of see it's mostly all covering the bottom. Then we're just going to dump the rest of the ingredients on the top. So these are the black beans. Now you could use dry beans 
dry back black beans, dry chickpeas, and dry white beans. But I just grabbed these today when I went to the store just because it makes it a little bit easier for YouTube videos. Generally, I would prefer to use dry beans. These are the beans complete with the juices. Same way with the chicken or with the uh, corn. It was the same way. Then we're going with our diced tomatoes. Next, I want to add the ranch seasoning. It is one packet of just dry ranch seasoning. Then you're going to add chili powder. I don't never measure anything. I'll be honest with you. This is probably equivalent to about three tablespoons. Maybe four tablespoons. The common is going to be about probably two tablespoons. Then you need about um, a half a cup of water. I'm going to use a one cup measuring cup, but I'm only going to fill it up halfway. Now, the final thing that you need is eight ounces of cream cheese. Just lay it on the top. Cream cheese going in. So when we're done, this is what we look like. It's just all dumped in there. See that? Next, put the lid on. You're going to set this for pressure cook. I think I did about 12 minutes the last time. Let's go with 14. 14 minutes, start. I'll bring you back and show you what this looks like in a bit. Hopefully I am not out of breath or anything like that. I actually took some time and went and did my workout. So I just got done running on the treadmill. Anyways, you want to wait until your Instant Pot gets to at least 15 minutes on Keep Warm. So that's what the L stands for, low. It shows it's actually been about 32 minutes. That lets it do a natural steam release and keeps the meat from getting tough. Once it's below 15 minutes or greater than 15 minutes, so we're at 32, you can go ahead and release whatever remaining steam is in it. And then let me get this back on a camera mount because the next step, you have to take the chicken out and shred the chicken. I usually do a plate and two forks. Sometimes it just falls apart and you ain't even got to shred anything. But we'll take a look here in a minute. You also want to give it a really good stir. Because I didn't stir it up. Man, that smells so good. <laughs> oh my, my stomach's growling. 
The thing about an Instant Pot is that steam can't release, so all that flavor gets trapped in, and that is why food tastes so much better in an Instant Pot. That was one of the first things. So I got my mom one of these for Christmas, and I, I bought my sister one. <laughs> I bought my daughter one. Everybody says food tastes so much better in these, and that's the reason why. I'll go ahead and get a plate ready just in case I do need to shred it. There, it finally dropped down. This is what it looks like. Like I said, it will need stirred up. You can see it is still bubbling. See if I can do this where you can see it. Yeah, so see the the chicken literally just falls apart. I ain't even gonna worry about shredding it. I mean, this is some really good stuff. Now you might see that the cream cheese doesn't break down too well in an instant pot. But the chicken is literally just falling apart. So what I do, you know, it's really kind of up to you. You can kind of dig the big pieces out and shred it with a, uh, like that right there. You could dig that out, shred it with a fork, stick it back in there. That's basically the last step. So once that's done, you just go ahead and service like a soup. And you can use Ritz crackers or something like that. A lot of people use tortilla chips. This is really good though. If you like chili... And you like chicken, you will love this. Give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.